I want to take a moment to begin this video and talk about this struggle we're having with this channel. It's really kind of the way that gun channels are interacting with Google and YouTube is affecting us and it's affecting our ability to be able to produce content. So I want to take a moment and just ask you support us on Patreon where a lot of the content we can't put here is going and it supports this ministry. Welcome to a series called He Trains My Hands for War, where we're going through the book of Joshua, verse by verse. Uh, to see what it is, we should be really expecting to be doing uh, during the time of tribulation, as far as being in the army of the living God. Uh, there's not a lot of examples of people who were in the army of the living God and behaved so perfectly and did it so precisely and had so much courage as these Israelites did. Uh, they literally were extremely obedient to God every step of the way without just fearlessly obedient to God. When the rest of the world uh, showed fear, they did not. When their ancestors were too afraid to cross the Jordan, they were not because they knew they had God on their side and because they understood prophecy and they knew it to be true. And they, they believed that as long, because God told them, that they had to be obedient uh, to the law, to the laws of God. And as long as they did these things um, and followed his every move, uh, they'd be very successful. And so this is an example that we have to see, well, how, what does it look like to be successful in the army of the living God? Now we're at that point where they're getting ready to cross over and instructions are being given. And we're just gonna pick it up right there. Joshua three, verse six. Then Joshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, by this you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into this Jordan. Now, therefore, take for yourselves 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was when the people set out from their camps to cross the Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant, before the people and as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water for the Jordan overflows all of its banks during the whole time of harvest that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam the city that is beside Zaratan. Now I'm going to pause there because that's quite a bit. The incredible piece here is that God told Joshua that, that he was about to see wonders, that, that the children of Israel were about to see God do wonders. And here they are, they're about to step foot into this river that is overflowing on the banks. And all of a sudden it dries up from upstream. Now Adam, and we'll get into kind of how this all dried up next episode. I just want to kind of take today's episode and talk about the example of this generation of Israelites seeing a miracle like this and the previous generation seeing a similar miracle, really kind of a bigger miracle, seeing the Red Sea part and what it is they did. Because if you look at their parents, when their parents left Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea, they said this in Exodus 14. 11, and they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians 
than that we should die in the wilderness. So here what you have is you have a group of people, their parents, the, the Joshua's, the, the people that Joshua is leading, this is their parents, that they watch these miracles. They watch the Red Sea part. They watch the plagues. They watch the fire come down from the sky and consume their enemy. And then they watched as soon as they got to the other side of the Red Sea, it, it, the, the Red Sea then consumed their enemy. Then immediately, like, why did you bring us over here to die? Like, it would have been better to just remain slaves. Are there, were there just weren't enough graves in Egypt for all of us? So you just brought us out here to just die in the wilderness? This is the attitude of most Americans anytime anything slightly bad happens to them. Uh, they just act like they're just the worst thing in the world ever happened to them. And these are first world problems that we're dealing with too. And this is why this, this particular book is so important to understand because when the rest of the world is doing that, when the time of tribulation happens, what we should be doing is crossing that river knowing that what's on the other side is the promise that God gave us that we could read about. Like we can read Revelation, we could read Ezekiel, we could read Jeremiah, we could read all the, what Jesus had to say about the end times. We could read, you know, much of what Paul had to say about the end times. We can read about what Jude had to say about the end times. So we know these things to be true. And I said in the beginning of this video, the thing that the Israelites had was that they had an understanding that prophecy was real and they were walking into it. So they were extremely confident in what they were doing. So when their feet stepped into that Jordan and it dried up, just like the Red Sea did, it was a very different thing. They went as conquerors. The Israelites came across as victims. Most of America is a victim and they have this victim mentality. Even though those first Israelites were conquerors, or those first Israelites to come out of Egypt were conquerors, they had a victim mentality. It is very, very important that we have this mentality of conquerors, because when you see times of tribulation starting and everything is going terrible for Christians <laughs> because they're losing their businesses, they're being fired from their jobs, they're being rounded up, they're being killed, they're being taken, dragged through court, and all of a sudden you're a criminal, you have to understand that you will be victorious for three and a half years prophesying and whooping up on the Antichrist and the world army. And all because of the power of God, all because of the power of God and knowing it to be true because we can read about it. It's important that we aren't victims anymore. God didn't take us to this place because there weren't enough graves. He took us to this place to give us victory and blessing and abundance. That's why he takes us through tribulation. We are meant to pick up our cross and follow him because the reward is great. It is great. So I hope these videos are helping. Stay with us. We'll kind of talk about how that Jordan River dried up next time. Any thoughts or insight on any of that, definitely put that in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Feel called call to support this channel with Patreon. The link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.